Welcome. This is Families and Children Really Matter, brought to you by MNOW TV. My name is Sal Frasca. On tonight's show, we're going to have a politician by the name of Frank Scutoro. And before we start the show, I'd like to say that the opinions that are expressed on this show are not that of the management, MNOW TV, National Marriage Centers, or Children's Rights Council. These opinions are that of the candidate and its desire to inform the public of his position and platform. Frank, welcome. All right. Thank you, Good Sal. to have you here. Great to be here. Uh, I know you're running in the race for the 4th District, is that correct? That's correct. And where does that district, you know, comprise? What, what areas? What towns? What it covers approximately half of Nassau County. If you draw a line from Union Turnpike to Marcus Avenue to Hillside Avenue, that is the northern border of the district, roughly from the Queens border out to the Wantaw Parkway down to the South Shore. Uh, it includes a good number of neighborhoods uh, from New Hyde Park to Mineola to Garden City to Rockville Center to the five towns, Long Beach, Merrick, Belmore, Wantaw, uh, Hempstead, uh, Uniondale, mm. uh, part of Valley Stream. Uh, it's a large, uh, a large community. Yeah, I, I, it seems like a very large community. Wow. That, how many constituents? Uh would you have if you were in Congress? About 717,000. 717,000. That's a large number. Mm -hmm. Well, I know you're in a primary now, and the primary, uh, I think uh, you have your opponent is Fran Becker? Correct. All right. Tell me, what do you think? I mean, tell me about your, your opponent. What, what is he? You know, give me an idea. What is he? Who is he? Well, the oppo my opponent has been a county legislator for pushing 17 years now. Uh, and I think that the people of Nassau County have not been satisfied with the go level of government they've been getting in the county, uh, much as they're dissatisfied with Washington. I mean, Nassau County has had one fiscal crisis after another. And we're still smarting from the mistakes that were made in the 1990s when the county leg legislator, the legislature was created. And Mr. Becker voted repeatedly to raise taxes. He voted against spending cuts. He voted for a good number of measures that really were not consistent with fiscal responsibility. And we now find ourselves, after the Republicans were in the wilderness for uh, eight years and the Democrats were in charge, Mr. Becker still in place voting the way the county uh, chairman tells him to vote, not ever exercising independent judgment, not really distinguishing himself in any way on matters of taxing and spending to really get our county out of the hole that it has been in. I think the voters of this district are looking for a change. I think they're looking for fresh leadership. They're not looking for someone who is a rubber stamp, whether you're talking about our local uh, officials or our national officials. And you know, in the case of Mr. Becker, as I mentioned, he votes the way the county chairman tells him to vote. Carolyn McCarthy, our incumbent Democratic Congresswoman, votes 98% of the time with Nancy Pelosi. The voters have not been given a choice, and I think that this election, and this primary election specifically, is about giving the voters a choice, something that they've been denied in too many cycles in the past. You know, it's been 20 years since the county Republican chairman picked a candidate who could win this seat. And I think it's about time that we, the people, stepped up and picked someone who, not because that candidate was beholden to political bosses, but because they would come out and represent the people and give them a voice in government wow. that they've been denied for too long, on the local as well as on the national level. So that's going to distinguish you from the other candidates? The, mm -hmm. the, your ability to take a stand, uh, maybe not uh, follow the, the usual path in politics? Will, I, will you be doing that? Oh, yes, and I think the, the path, the usual path that we've seen nationally and locally has consisted of higher taxes, higher spending, deficit spending, not uh, cutting your spending when your income is, is lower. It's involved government waste. We're looking at exceedingly wasteful government, both on the federal level and on the local level. Now, I, going back to the 1990s, going back to when I was a college student, I worked to take on a failed government agency that was not pursuing its mission, that in fact was trying to sweep problems under the rug. I know what it means to swim upstream. 
And I know what it means when people put pressure on you because they want you to go along with whoever the head of the fiefdom is. And we have a lot of government agencies that operate like their own fiefdoms. A lot of people say you can't take on City Hall and win, but I think with perseverance you can do it. And that's one thing that the mission that I pursued in the 1990s to take on the National Park Service and to push to persuade Congress to clean up President Grant's tomb, that really set me on the path that I continue to follow today. I determined back then that I would never choose the path of least resistance over the path of doing what is right. And in more recent years, I had the opportunity to counsel Republican senators in the Senate Judiciary Committee on the nominations of Chief Justice Roberts and Justice Alito to the Supreme Court, not to mention a good number of other men and women of integrity, people who put the Constitution first, mm. and who were under fire for doing so. Those were some of the most uh, bitter wars that I think, bitter fights that occurred within Congress, and I'm glad to So uh, Congress say, is not unfamiliar to you. You no. walked the halls of Congress. You mm -hmm. dealt with the, the politicians in, in Congress. That's right. I've had an opportunity to do so both on a staff uh, from the inside, uh, dealing with judicial nominations, and also, though, from the outside, being something of a gadfly whistleblower. And then later on, I actually taught about Congress at Hofstra Law School. So All I've right, yeah, been right. able to see own, the yeah. institution from, from several <coughs> angles. So you're, you're telling me that you're going to have the courage to do the right thing? Well, I've, I hope <laughs> people who know me will say that I've uh, shown that before. Right. And then I'll continue to do so. I stood up to uh, some agency officials who were not uh, out to do the right thing back in the 90s, and I'm standing up to the political bosses today. If that's what doing the right thing means, I'm willing to do it. Good. That, that's admirable in today's political arena. It Thanks. really is. It's, and it's uh, unusual. Um, let, tell us a little bit about the broader theme of your campaign. What's really your campaign about? And, you know, tell us. Well, the, the big theme, I think, uh, has to go to putting our fiscal house in order. We have a government that has been taxing us and spending us off a cliff. It's really been manifested in the loss of jobs. We have fewer people now employed than when this fiscal crisis first uh, existed. We have a national debt that is approaching $16 trillion. This is about the size of our entire economy. And as long as we leave these problems unaddressed, you're going to find that our children and grandchildren's generations are going to be the ones who suffer. It's their futures that are being mortgaged away if we don't address these I, problems. I, I understand that, but uh, isn't this fiscal crisis a global crisis, right? All over mm -hmm. the world, it's, it seems to be systemic in, in society all over. So are we coming up to a, a crescendo of, uh, of any sorts where all of us are going to be in trouble? Well, we have uh, seen a crisis internationally, and in fact, in Europe, where the problem is more pronounced, uh, we have seen the problem uh, exacerbated by statist policies that do more and more to concentrate power in the hands of regulators. It makes it less and less certain for job creators what the economic environment is going to look like. In Greece, if you want to focus on the most troubled country in Europe, you have what probably begins as a problem of values before anything else. A problem where people don't fulfill their obligations under the law. Uh, a problem in which people cannot be trusted to, that, you know, that their word will be their bond. I mean, the, the values that so many of us were brought up with as Americans, and many who have a background like my family, my dad emigrated from Italy as a boy, you know, we were taught the values of hard work, of faith, of family, and of playing by the rules. And now we see a system in which those who play by the rules are being punished, and those who are most irresponsible are the ones who are too often bailed out of, of, the, the, of the consequences of the decisions that they make. And by the way, there's fault to go around on both sides of the aisle, among Republicans as well as Democrats. We have to really start anew when we talk about our fiscal policies. And we have job creators who don't know what our tax code is going to be beyond a year from now. They have to know what our tax system is going to entail. Uh, they are going to need a much simpler code than we now have. We have 
uh, those who want to invest in our future who don't know what the value of the dollar is because we're printing the dollar with reckless abandon. We, we, they don't know what our regulatory system is going to be like because we delegate more and more power to unelected bureaucrats rather than having legislators do the job that they were elected to do.